Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another day of the video. Darren, how's it going today? Today we are on campus. It is 22. We made good time to this morning. I left as the pips were coming on the radio for seven o'clock, so um, I did pretty good. Uh, and also, there's like next to no traffic, so I just cruised in. And I love driving in in the morning. It gives you, it gives you a purpose. It's like a nice break from stuff. You're like, ah, just listen to the radio and have a whale of a time. I'm currently headed to the library. Um, I'm going to listen to the radio again uh, for the first chunk of the morning. And I'm going to go through the notes that I gathered from yesterday, both from my interview and lectures yesterday. I'm going to type them all up, get a digital copy of them, make sure they're all indexed and whatnot so I can search through them later. And then basically do that until my lecture. Doing it in the morning, it's my way of time boxing what it is that I need to do. Um, like, because it's very easy just to go home and I'll be like, when I've got like a three hour chunk of time, I'll spend half an hour typing up notes. Then typing up notes takes 45 minutes, and then I don't have as big a chunk of time. And then I'll like tea and all that kind of stuff. So, we go to the library, type up some notes, sort out admin, and I'll do that every day. As soon as I have my first lecture, go to the lecture, come out, and then it's final year project time. Like I say, I'm a full time final year project developer part-time student this year, so it's very windy. It's like a fucking wind tunnel on this bloody campus. This is like the coolest little wallet as well. I used it for Christmas. And like, I normally have to have my ID in my wallet, and I have to take my wallet out all the time and put it down on things. Now my ID's in this, and my Yui one. Um, I can just put this in my back pocket, because it doesn't matter to sit on something that thin. It's so good. <laughs> Fucking life changes, it's any day too. Window seat or other seat today, what do you think? Tipped here, just finished typing up HCI notes and they mentioned this book. So I'll make go and check it out. Can't find it. Turns out I'm on the wrong floor. It's downstairs, lol. Um, I'm on level four, it's on level three. Idiot. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't necessarily want to read it. It was just mentioned as a good book and I've heard it. I think some kind of vloggers have mentioned it's a good book as well. I swear I've seen someone read it on YouTube. Like, I may just go and get it from um, Yui instead of get it from here. Lol. I think that style of time boxing is going to be really useful. Like that, I got all my stuff done. I typed up some notes from my final project. And now, time to go to my lecture. First lecture of the day, I've got two lectures and they're both cryptography. So, fun fun. Get you in on a little insight in a way um, on how I picked all of my modules this year. CI is something that I really, really enjoy, and the lecture is pretty good. Cryptography is something that sounds interesting, at least to me. To be fair, this is going to be probably a big module, um, but the lecturer isn't very good, in my opinion. Uh, although I haven't seen him obviously do cryptography. Um, and then the final one is logic and semantic programming languages. It's something that I don't particularly find very interesting, but I like the lecturer. And the advantage is that all of those, none of them have a programming coursework. One of them has a report, and one of them has... Um, maths problem sheets. So I basically just wanted to avoid doing programming coursework because programming coursework, as you saw last semester, take up a lot of your time. Final year project's too important to do that, so. Right. Holy shit, this room is free until three o'clock. I love this room. This is my favourite room on campus and it's never ever free. I was going to go next door into the little. that room. But fuck it, I love this room over there. <sighs> so much area, it's bigger, big window look to look out of. Photography was a fun lecture, uh, say fun, uh, the lecturer is in classic his style, it's quite like slow and boring and he mumbles and forgets what he's trying to say, but it means that he goes, they produce the notes before the lecture, so you can basically go through the notes in the lecture and then just kind of, I'm ahead now, and I'm just kind of waiting for him to catch up with me. Well, I've got another lecture with him, obviously, later, but, like, I will... I can sort out, um, um, what am I talking about? Yeah, I'm ahead. There's, like, one little bit where I'm like, oh, what's that all about? So I'll sit and wait for him to do that. But, yeah, our next cryptography lecture is later today. I really annoy having... I really don't like having two lectures of the same thing on the same day because it doesn't give you enough time to go over stuff in between them. That's what bugs me. Although I guess it's fresher in your mind in the first place. Um, he also does a lot of problem sheets, so there's going to be a problem sheet every week. And the first one is cracking some codes, which is, looks quite fun. 
Uh, although people like Andy and that lot are a bit scared of the prerequisite pre maths that we need to know. For about week five, week six, it's going to start getting mathsy, and he says he's looked at that maths and it looks quite scary. So I have put it on my to-do list to look at it at a, at a later point. <sighs> Either way, it's now quarter past ten, and I am going to do some final year project because that's what I do now. I'm a full-time final year project developer. Um, yeah, like I said, my next lecture is at two o'clock, so I'm going to be working in here until lunch and then have lunch carry on programming and then lecture and then home is my plan and then I can go do some other stuff at home but yeah I'm trying to make find use the most productive time possible as programming time and then the rest for other stuff and then obviously I can lose programming time if I need to the problem I'm fighting at the moment however is I'm quite hungry <laughs> and the sandwiches I have for this um, for today is an absolute diamond, and I just want to eat it now. It's a uh, look at that. Look. Oh, it's ten o'clock in the morning. It's not time for dinner yet. God damn it! Let's get some bloody final year project work done. Take your mind off it, like moved because the sun. That I was like, oh, the window it's so big and open and lovely. It was. I couldn't see my screen. <laughs> so I moved out of its way. Moved out of its wake. I mean, like, look at that view, man. It's nice, isn't it? Well, kind of. It looks cool. As much as I love this room, it's really uncomfortable. Because, like, the... There's this here, this big D thing. So you can't get close to the desk. Because your knees are in the way. And then you can't, like... Oh. So I'm really uncomfortable. I'm going to move <laughs> to the next door. Oh, God. I love the room. It's bloody brilliant. But uncomfortable as fuck, man. It's also really easy to charge laptops and stuff, and my laptop's going to need charging just as I move into a room that is difficult to charge things with. Such an idiot. Right, so, been programming away. More breaks for lunch and like a YouTube video or two to numb, like get the brain moving again and stuff. I'm having problems with test running. I don't know whether it's a problem with my surface in particular or not, but VS test is acting weirdly. This bloody windy storm is still whipping about. Literally just walked straight past my lecture. Photography is done. Um, Christ, it's, uh, Tuesdays are a dry day of nothing but cryptography. Cryptography, the lecture is just so bad. Just the way he mumbles on things. I'm back home, by the way. Uh, it's just the way like he mumbles and turns around and like forgets what he's saying halfway through and he just does the entire lecture to the whiteboard behind him and you just watch the entire thing and you're like, oh god man, this is... <laughs> Mate. So, yeah, it's um... It, well, I mean it wasn't... It wasn't too bad. Because you've got the slides, like he puts the notes up online Thank you very much for doing that. You can go through them at your own kind of pace and then it's just when you're like, oh, I don't really understand that. Then you listen up and then whatever he says, that doesn't make much sense either. Uh, it's a bit like a bit irritating. But anyway, um, I'm back now, ladies and gentlemen, and I am going to be trying to figure out... I figured out the problem with my... Uh, when I was saying that I was having problems with VS test, it's because the solution I was running it on didn't wasn't building it in debug mode, it was building it in surface mode because um, I have these special builds set up so that the exceptions test pass because then I run a couple of transforms on the app config so that it's set up for both computers um, so that I can, in theory, program without hiccups on both machines. Um, right, okay, cool. So, Atlas has the latest version of code. Brilliant, but there's something about that that VS test from the command line doesn't enjoy and it'll, well, either A won't run but then when you run it with MS test, which does run, like 20%, maybe 10% of the tests will fail for uh, because the stubs fail for some reason. And change that to debug mode, everything's fine. Um, so I don't know what's going on there, to be honest with you. No, I bloody dear. But what I'm going to be doing at this precise moment in time is, it's like five o'clock now, it's quite late, um, is I'm going to be trying to write a script to so that I can run the um, command line thing easily, so I can watch it testing. Like 
instead of going to the command line and going to the right folder and do this, I want to just build up a script that will be able to run it from a place where I can analyze the results instead of um, from a place that can't analyze the results. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And then in theory, tomorrow is a case of plumbing it in and seeing how we work from there. Swag, that PowerShell script is going to save me a lot of time. Also, it means that it now works here, which is good. Um, basically, all I need to do now is run this and change the parameter. So, am I best off relying on PowerShell scripts, or should I do some kind of process, um, process uh, thing? So here's what I'm thinking, right? I could either produce a PowerShell script that could wrap around the VS text, VS test executable. So I could do that, or I could um, just directly call that exe. Now obviously I've got to drop out to the PowerShell, so there's that. Hmm. hmm. What's the better approach, though? I mean, there's still I've got. It's not something I'm deciding now. So I've probably, to be fair, got time to think about this overnight before I do anything silly. Hmm. I think I can hear Laura coming back. Oh no, it's probably someone else's door. <laughs> Depends if I think it's going to be easier to... How is it going to be easier to get the response out from the PowerShell script? Like, I think it's going to need a bit of experimentation to be fair. But like, the data that I get back is going to have to come back somehow. So do I have that being processed by PowerShell and then being pumped back in because then I can pump it in as an object I believe I could just go there you go it's, it's an object response because it's .NET and it PowerShell or do I have it being read in via the um, other one hmm. evening again ladies and gentlemen it's a time jump on our hands and how's it going um, so Shortly after I finished talking to you, um, well, no, yeah, Laura came home, and then we went to uh, cook dinner. We tried to do um, sausage, sausage and mash, but with Sweden potato mash. But for some reason, like we couldn't get the pan with the Sweden to boil, so the the mash, the potatoes were done well in advance of the Swede, and the Swede was like basically boiled, and um, so that didn't turn out too great. But otherwise, it was a very nice dinner. We had steamed leeks as well. Leeks are really good. I don't have leeks very often, but they're very good leeks, aren't they? I like them. Otherwise, though, uh, from that point on, basically, we've been doing some like generic stuff around in a boot. Um, Laura was moving a boot earlier, and I have been a thinking about whether or not how to approach this programming task. I'm probably going to be thinking about it like up until the point I get to it, which could be halfway through tomorrow, um, whether or not to wrap it in PowerShell or not. And the, the, basically it's a case of if I create a clever PowerShell script, could I easily produce an object that my C-sharp code can understand, or am I best off just going through in C-sharp and doing it like that? Like where am I best off doing the calculation to turn it into an object, C-sharp or PowerShell? And by C-sharp, I mean, like, limited C-sharp. Anyway, so, there's that. Otherwise, though, I've been doing some cryptography. We have, like, a cryptography. We have worksheets, like, every week, apparently. Um, and we learn about some, like, really basic ciphers today. And I've just been going through doing, like, code breaking. Trying to solve... Managed to solve these two. Um, this one took me bloody ages. That was quite easy. Um... And now I'm working on this one here, which is, this is where I think I'm making headways. I've, I've only like had a dive at it. I'm, take, I'm making guesses, 
Um, like we haven't been told how to solve these. I'm making guesses on Google searches and stuff on like statistical things about like there's two Q's there, two Z's there, etc. Um, also, G turns up a lot. So I've guessed that G is E based on the st the like how often that comes up. The next most common thing is like the and um, yig comes up a couple of times. Um, yig. Anyway, yeah. So I'm making guesses on that, but otherwise it's better. Graham came out and chilled with us as she normally does in the evening, and um, we've put her back in. We emptied out a tube and stuff so that we could. Um, like figure out how much food she had so we could fill up a food bowl put all the bedding back in there she's been in for like well okay no yeah she's been in for about nearly an hour now um, and she's playing a new game it's a fun game it's called the is it possible to get a poo on every single step of the tube game she's doing well um, but anyway yeah so we're gonna head off to bed because it's 11 o'clock and well I'm not all that tired particularly I should I could stay up and do the vlog but I want to go to bed earlier and then we'll figure it out and stuff like that. So anyway, yeah, tomorrow is we have one lecture. I'm going to go see Ben, because I'm going to be dropping off the surround sound system. Um, and then we are doing programming during the day, potentially some uh, cryptography, as I'm going to be typing it up in the morning before my first lecture anyway. Um, yeah, so cool. My daily vlog, I'm probably going to sort out when I get home tomorrow. I should do it at night. I'm being naughty. Thanks very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you later.